Texans. Mm. Oh, Miles, we're here, episode, buddy. Yep, another episode. <sighs> Dude, number 26. We're doing Dropping pretty good, on, man. We we're are, racking we're these things up. up. Racking and stacking. Mm. Get in. <laughs> <laughs> Getting so, more uh, more of these things under our belt, getting more uh, more experience, uh, getting a little smoother. Yes, you know, we are getting oh. much more proficient at bothering people on a twice weekly schedule yeah. with Nissan news that you didn't know about. So, what do we got going on in this episode today, Mike? All right, so uh, on this episode of the Nissan Nerd Podcast, we want to go ahead and talk about Nissan, but uh, but uh. <laughs> Nissan sells its stake in Daimler. We'll take a few minutes to talk about that. We're also going to talk about an unlucky weekend that the uh, Formula E team had uh, this last weekend in Spain. Oh. And then uh, part of our episode here, we have our special guest, Mr. Brian Settle, jump in with us. And we're going to talk Z-Days, uh, happening, a festival happening very, very soon. So go ahead. It's Nissan Nerd Podcast. Stay with us coming up. Oh, back again, oh. back at it again. Sure are, All man. right. So we've got a special guest today. You want to bring him in? You want to do it, Miles? Yeah, let's drop this fool in. All right, all right. So we're going to start off strong here, everybody. For those of you that are with us on Facebook, thank you for being here. We have a special guest that's going to join us for the show and a good friend of ours. First of all, a great friend, hell of a promoter, hell of an event organizer. Many of you will know him. We're going to bring you on, uh, Mr. Brian Settle. Where's what? he at? Oh, hey, what? What's oh, up? <laughs> Where are your hands, Brian? Let me see. Oh, get him out of there, Brian. Yeah, where I can see him. <laughs> Hang on, my bit. Here we go. Oh, 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 oh. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> wow. So before we get started with everything, uh, Mike, what you been up to, man? Man, as far as what's going on lately, I won't lie to you, dude. Uh, I've had a string of bad luck lately um, with with my my 350. And uh, most recently, dude, this happened just yesterday. I'm driving home. Car sounds exactly as it should. And before you know it, uh, I've got this obnoxious noise. And I looked underneath the car. It's the exhaust uh, on the white pipe. You've got that little three-inch collector. Uh, totally broken in half. i got a pipe broken in half. So... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you done broke your pipe. Right. It's it's broken, and um, you know I, I'm gonna say, man. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna get it fixed here. I got I got plans for tomorrow. At tomorrow night, take care of it. But in the meantime, I'm driving around town with this, and I'm just gonna say it. It it sounds like crap, and with the um, I think it lets me know how how old I've gotten. Because so, I think the younger version of me would have loved that noise. You know, when you're young, it's like, it's just loud. Who cares? But as you get older, you get more refined. You like you want a certain tone, especially with the VQs. You want less rasp and all these other pieces. But uh, I, um, oh, what can I say, man? My eyes burn. I'm getting lightheaded. My ears are bleeding. So it's like you're driving <laughs> a Datsun 240Z. All right. Got it. <laughs> But, so uh, you are a uh, hoopty rolling tailpipe dragon 350z yeah. right now all right cool all as right. of right now that's that's how i'm rolling right now though but i tell you again uh it makes me feel old and young at the same time man it's just it's almost like um the way i thought about it with the exhaust was hmm. the way i think how how nice or bad it looks it's almost like a haircut when you're younger too you ever have a haircut when you're younger and you're like i love that haircut and then now you look older you look back at pictures and you think oh hmm. this that sucked what was i thinking I should yeah, never have got that crew cut. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> mullet, you know what I mean? What was that? I should never have put in Cash Money Brothers on the side of my – right there. What? It was just a – it was a fad. I should have got out of it. Yeah. So That's how I feel about the exhaust right now because I think the younger version of me would have loved it, but the older – the me now, not a fan. So Not a fan. I'm fixing it right away. How about you, man? What's, uh, what's going on in your world? Me? Uh, let me see here. I scrapped a bunch of cores that I uh, had of like some old VG motors and aluminum heads from Nissan that oh, didn't make the uh, thing. So I took everything over to uh, 
the old scrap pile, all my catalytic converters that I had mm. sitting on the shelves. So I cashed it all in. Mm, yeah. Mm, mm, so I could have money to buy new car parts. Yeah. So why not? Right. You had a stockpile there too. Uh, last time I saw. I did. Uh, did, yeah, did you I make did. out? Was it like gold for you, man? You make uh, some good. Uh, catalytic converters, scratch? baby. They pay. Uh, they pay good money. Don't ever think that your catalytic converters aren't worth money. Because there's a crackhead out there that is going to prove you wrong. So <laughs> they're going to cut them right off of your vehicle. So, yeah, I just uh, that's all I did, man. A really nice weekend. We got hit with a lot of rain and tornadoes and hurricanes here in San Antonio. So I guess I'm just kind of scooping water off of the, the front lawn, mowing lawns, that kind of garbage. So, you know, unfortunately not a big heavy weekend for me. But, you know, maybe next time I'll come at you with something a little more fun, not waste everybody's time. Brian, I, yeah. you always got something cool going on, man. What, what have you been up to? Uh, so the race car is all but together. I'm waiting on one shock, and we can start looking at some track time. Added another. Now, when you say days. track car, people at home, they don't know what you got. Go ahead, man. Throw a label out. What you got? It, it's, it's just an old ratty 350Z. <laughs> ratty 350Z. Okay. <laughs> we'll talk but, about it in a little while because hmm. it is far from ratty. You're being... Uh, lowercase modest. So yeah, <laughs> shut up. All right. What else you been up to? Uh, uh, I've got some new uh, people I work with. I've got them into disc golf. So now we're playing a couple times a week. So you know the great thing about disc golf is you've had a crappy day at work. You can now go outside and throw something as hard as you want. It's perfectly okay. Hmm. It's a how nice much, stress relief. How much marijuana do you have to smoke to actually play golf frisbee? Is it good? Just a uh, bit? A yeah, yeah, around. <laughs> it's a legal possession. Just it's kidding. Right. This day and age, it's all legal. It's all legal. Yeah, it's yeah, a misdemeanor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right. look at you! You're copying yeah. me now. Oh, look at that. oh. that's right. We're ponytail yeah, brothers. Gonna... Let's put them together. Wow, you're not our powers. Yeah, it's been these a while are we've seen you, man. Yeah, you're yeah. growing it out. These are my uh, pox locks. Hey, I gotta ask you one quick question. What are the trophies in the back for? Is that for? Uh, is that yeah. for? Uh, those don't look like uh, those don't look yeah. like participation trophies. So <laughs> for showing up, those are car show awards uh, on the shelf, and the, the ones that people are they the ones that people didn't pick up. Yeah, you know my my, my ratty three fifty Z. The big one in the middle is a burnout competition. I won at Nobi two thousand four. Nobi, th whoa, Ooh. taking it back, man. Um. And then the one beside it is also from my lightning, uh, at a lightning fest way back when, and some other sort of stuff in the Golden Godzilla. And that is a tailgate. I got the Golden Godzilla. Yeah. That's a tailgate off a of 620 that's been painted. There you go. A Dotson 620? Uh, yeah. Oh, I might have yeah, to like break that. in your might have to break in your house and steal that. Yeah. <laughs> in case I can't find a clean tailgate. Now that's really yeah. nice, man. Kudos. So, yeah, uh, Fair Lady Customs painted it, and Amber did all the this black metal flake, pearl, gorgeous base. Then she did all that hand dragon artwork on it. Mm, I see. Cool, man. Yeah, oh, you're I talking to, to 620 owners, man. So oh, dude, we're, we're our total language. 620 nerds. <laughs> I forgot to tell you, um, you know, I wanted to say kudos, um, you know, not to take away, Brian, but, uh, yeah, we, we um, I forgot to tell you that we actually did – um, I've been busy, but I, I actually uh, forgot to mention that we had a birthday party for uh, one of our fellow followers. He's usually always on, a Mr. Ion Gupta. So it was his birthday, and we threw him a little surprise party up in Austin um, at uh, Against the Grain Customs. Um, Rob Settle who used to be, uh, he was actually one of the presidents for the Capital Z of Texas group. Um, so we threw a big party for him. Let me see here. I'll actually show you. Um, what we did for him. So we threw him like a little surprise birthday party yep, and yep. blew his mind. Did you? And Oh yeah. Blew it. Totally. Good, good, Let's good. Where are you at? There you go. <laughs> awesome. So, so there's a, a packed full of people. Yeah. And against the grain is a fabrication shop for those who don't know. Right. Hmm. Yeah, so uh, Rob Curtis over at uh, Against the Grain actually was nice enough to uh, uh, lend us the shop for the day, um, and we brought all the cars out. We just kind of had a good time with the uh, with the event, 
And um, Rob actually took it upon himself to uh, get an image, the original image for the Z32, which I own's a, a big Z32 fanatic. So we had it water jetted, cut it out. You can start to see it right there. Sweet. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that was like some really stick, uh, some thick steel plating. And Rob, uh, Rob was nice enough. He's right there in the, the white shirt and the black hat. But he runs, uh, <laughs> he runs an amazing uh, custom uh, fabrication business uh, out of Austin. And just a heck of a nice guy, too, as well. So we were nice enough to uh, put together something for Ion. And uh, we got him a little birthday cake there. But uh, hell of a nice guy. You know, some of those events are some of the best that you can do. <laughs> that picture is priceless. <laughs> then we all got together and signed it. All right. Yep. So wow. uh, kudos and happy birthday to him. So, uh, you know, uh, he's one of our special listeners. Good friend, too, as well. So kudos to him. I just wanted to give him a quick shout out for his birthday. So. That's awesome, man. Uh, yeah, I'm, I, that's really cool, man, to see like a craft, um, like your gift being made in front of you like that with the, with the plasma cutter. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's a custom, you know, and uh, of course, we're all Z32 fans, right? So that's awesome to see, man. Yeah, it was a good event. Yeah, I forgot to mention it. But, um, yeah, Brian, I wanted to shift a little focus to you, man. So you've been the founder of Z Days um for since the finding <laughs> you've been the founder of uh z days how many years you've been uh doing that because you're coming up on 18. how many years now 18 years so a little little fact i did not found z days oh andy morris and morris morgan founded z days in 2004 uh andy had some uh personal things come up in 2008 and I ended up inheriting it, and I've been running it since '08, so I've run it 14 years. Good. What were the first? Uh, what were the first events like back in the day? Honey, uh, 2004 we had 74 people, and 2005 we had about 180. <laughs> 2006 <laughs> we had well, let's, 250, let's, 300. Let's, Let's not go too much into it because we got a lot to cover here today, but we want to get some time to actually talk about Z days because that is a whole thing in itself in the deep dark tunnel, which is Z days. We're going down that hole soon. Yeah. We're doing that. (laughs) We're doing that. Yeah. But we got to, but if I'm right, we got it coming up on May 20th and May 23rd, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, this year they're changing it out of the Fontana village and we're doing it in blowing rock, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's let's come back to it here in a little bit because I want to give you a whole lot of time to kind of talk about it. But yeah, I, uh, I I'm glad you're here with us, man. I um, I've uh, I'm, I'm, we've been friends for quite a number of years, and uh, you've known Mike for a number of years here too as well. And um, I guess I'm just trying to think when's the when's when did we meet you and I? Probably ZCon San Antonio, two thousand nine, eight. <sighs> Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. And when did you? Uh, yeah. Bad Mike. Yeah. <laughs> I met him at Z Nationals. And he's like, "You're coming to ZCon." And I'm like, "Oh." Yeah. <laughs> because I mean, I I it's was kind of a black sheep. I was an outlier, and I didn't know what I was walking into. And when Mad Mike says you're going to do something, you're going to do it. You're going to do it. Yeah, that's you don't say no to Mad Mike. <laughs> Well, you've got two options. You could be a willing participant or a struggling victim, but it's going to happen. What do you have your shirts at uh, when you volunteer? Uh, What do your shirts always say every year? Oh, they're always different. So this one is Jurassic. You'll get Jurassic. I think one. Volunteer X. Ah. (laughs) (laughs) I remember cool. uh, I saw one year it was says voluntold. Yep. So I was like, oh, Jesus. And you gave that shirt to me. You're like, all right, get out there and go judge. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, everybody's favorite one was the green one that said, that's a horrible idea. What that's time awesome. do I show up? Uh, it's what awesome. time do I show up? So, yeah. <laughs> we try to make, you know, if we're asking for a handful of hours, we need to give you something that's fun to wear, right? It's true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, I want to take a moment here and uh, uh, 
before we start going into all our news, start talking about Z days, we wanted to kind of give a salute to those in the Nissan family who we wish to uh, good wish good health and to those that we may have lost. Um, we want to uh, be reminded of them. So I wanted to give a quick salute out. Uh, hold on, I gotta get my drink. First off, go. Mike. Whatever you got in front of you, everybody. Uh -huh. You wanna do this? Uh -huh. Yeah, let's do it? this. Oh, oh you got it, just there enough. you go. Just enough. All right. Just Boop. enough. <laughs> clink, clink, all right. Mm. Oh, good stuff. All right. Kampai. <laughs> so, uh, Mike, let's go into a little bit of news here today. Um, let me see here. Now, I wanted to talk about um, some news before we start talking about Z-Days here. But yeah. a lot's kind of happened with the Z-Proto. Um, so, actually, the Z-Proto found its way to um, an interesting spot in the last few days. Uh, let's see here. Let me bring it up here for you. You got it. Everybody's got their eyes on the Z right now. Panda watch. Yeah. <laughs> Panda watch. I, that's exactly why I do that. Yeah. <laughs> Did you bring it up? Let me see. There you go. I'm, I got you. So, all right. So this came out on the drive, and it turns out that the uh, new Nissan Proto Z, you can call it the 400 Z, you can call it the. Uh, uh, the new Z, whatever you want to call it, but it made its way to the streets of Nashville on its way to a Cars and Coffee, um, which is um, pretty interesting because there is a hell of a lot of traction on it on the internet. Um, this is one really good article. And, um, you know, I'm just super excited that it made its way onto, uh, uh, onto the buzz that's happening right now with it. So I, I seriously doubt that it was... Uh, uh, that it wasn't uh, pre-orchestrated because all of these ropings and everything else, I have to give them kudos, man. They really set it up really nice. Underplayed, but um, uh, overhyped. I mean, <laughs> so hyped, but under uh, uh, it was kind of under the radar. We didn't even know that this was it, happening. It happened very so. quick. Yeah. It happened very quick. I, I didn't hear about it maybe it's like less than 24 hours before uh, Cars and Coffee actually uh, began. That's when I started seeing the – the uh, the feedback from online people a lot of a lot of our friends in the Atlanta area even had made that that pilgrimage to Nashville on a whim just you know just to have their eyes on this car in person. Hey uh, Brian, what are your thoughts on the new 370Z? I've got I'm going to pre-order it as soon as I can. <laughs> yeah, I mean, twin twin turbo six manual transmission got me in. I I can fix everything else that's wrong with it. <laughs> yeah. what, right, what what's calling you what, what are you super excited about um i like the fact that it's already built for force induction so upgrading turbos improving airflow improve the cooling it's got a good core uh it's a matter of some bolt-ons and some tuning i think it's a really solid package maybe the, certainly more solid than the previous two generations even though it's built on the previous generation, but the engine itself, really excited. You know, I, I was curious if we were going to have like, you know, when the 370Z was coming out, they reached out to all the Z clubs and they had kind of this like pre roster of like, if you want to get up, get in on it before you knew what it was going to look like. And that was years and years ago. Uh, we got that mostly through the, um, um, uh, through uh, the ZCCA and then it trickled down to the car clubs and then we could all sign up for it. But yeah, I, I'm interested to see if, you know, if they throw out like something special for enthusiast package, like a limited edition, I might be down for that. I might be uh, jumping the, uh, getting ready to jump in on that at, at an early stage. It definitely has piqued my interest. I mean, it's a hell of a car if it's truly going to be at where they're talking about on this price point. So right. I've, they, I've seen that before. Other, other models have that release edition, like you said too, that would be a little bit more of a, a nice little touch, you know, for those who the ones that have been call it. I've been like, I've been uh, what's it? I've been waiting this whole time, and I got this lousy car or something like or something funny like that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that edition, you know, it's not lousy, uh, but you know what I mean. <laughs> like they had the launch I got edition this Supra that was special. You know, there was only a couple thousand of those made. Uh, some other cars have done a launch edition. I don't want anything that special because what I'm going to do to it. <laughs> yeah it's just got to be christian what i'm going to do to that car and so you're not waiting until the warranty uh expires now, right uh, he's going to void the warranty in the first <laughs> first day first oh, day 
I will launch such a burnout leaving the dealership. They'll void the warranty for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I have to say. This is though, assuming we can do a burnout in it if it's not nanny to death. I think you're yeah. right. You got a good point. Um, by the way, there was a little peek into uh, what we talked about in the last episode. I saw that at the end. I thought that was kind of funny. So um, something else that I want to kind of show you um, here that, um, I mean, there was just a whole flood of news and articles that kind of came from this um, as a, uh, I mean, cause I woke up on the Saturday morning and then all of a sudden I started getting my emails blowing up. Mike messaged me and he was like, did you know this was, I was like, yeah, I was like, yeah. I was like, I, I had no idea. And then all of a sudden article, 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 everything was kind of coming at us. And in the wake of all that, like, as soon as that dropped, um, I also saw that this little tidbit kind of came out. Now, this was uh, kind of brutal, uh, this article, if you didn't see it in Jalopnik. And uh, <laughs> the 370Z is really, truly dead now. Um, and I think this is kind of making a point with the fact that the we're seeing the new Z roll out. So we're probably not going to ever see a new model. What are your thoughts? Mm -hmm. Brian, what do you got? They might, depending on when they release the the next generation, they may do one more year of a carryover, but it's going to be abysmal. I mean, just like the last year of the 350, everybody was waiting on the 370, and the last year just didn't sell. And now the new Z's dangling out there. Yep. Why, why would you buy a 13-year-old car when the new one's coming? Mike, you did some same thing. you did some stats search on uh, on the three seventy Z this year. Is that right? I I did I did. Um, let me well, show you if it's I... too depressing, don't put it out there. But if it's, <laughs> if it's great, then well, I mean, well, I'll just give you some numbers though. I mean, in terms of what we're seeing is that obviously this this new, just like Brian said, that the uh, the new model is 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 being dangled in front of us. It it would be it would be un. It would be weird if uh, someone really wanted that new model right now. The, sorry, the, the, the 370 as a 2020 <laughs> model right now. But um, to that end, what they're saying right now is that there's not very many 370Zs to buy brand new right now anyway. the the twenty For this year, 2021, essentially we as customers here, at least here in the U.S., we've received uh, just the carryover from 2020. And according to the stats that I have, they've made – uh, Nissan only manufactured about two thousand units, give or take, and uh, they're they're pretty much gone. If you go look, and literally you can do this, go to Auto Trader, go to any online sales base, and look for a new twenty twenty three seventy Z. They're not there. Very few. Um, honestly, I did my distance. You know, when you search how far you're going to go, I did any distance, and I only got one, and it was a Nismo model for fifty grand. So I, I really. At least based on that data, at least at the moment, there aren't any 370Zs for sale right now, man. <laughs> they're they're all gone. Well, I have to say that I think you you hit it on a point. You found another article that we uh, wanted to talk about on the Z that I uh, I thought was pretty interesting. It, we won't go too much into it, but uh, do you want to bring that up, Mike? Uh, which one are you referring to? You're talking about the. Uh... Well, we had a lot. I mean, there was a lot. We we got inundated with new articles that were kind of coming out, um, but it. But that's fine. No, uh, but yeah, I kind of was talking. Go ahead. No, no, the one I was referring to, I think, is really just summing it up, saying that you know, the 400Z is probably coming soon because you can't find a 370 right now. That's sort of the the headline of that article. <laughs> so I think I summed it up pretty well. You think you did a good job with that? All right, we'll I leave it so. at that. So, didn't you have some you speculation? Let us know. <laughs> didn't you have some spe some speculation on what it was truly doing in uh, in that area in <laughs> Carrollton? Because it got spotted in Carrollton too, as well. Oh, oh, that's right. So, you know, just earlier you were talking about how the Z Proto found its way to uh, Nashville, which is the Nissan North American headquarters. True. And uh, coincidentally, this wasn't on. This wasn't as publicized as as the Z Proto in Nashville. But what I did Correct. see some little rumblings on Facebook was that that Z Proto actually made a stop in a little town uh, called Carrollton, Georgia. And for those who have ever shopped online for any type of z part you probably know that there's also a major shop in carrollton georgia which is z1 uh i can't imagine 
So I do have video. I know for a fact that the, the Z Proto found its way into Carrollton, Georgia. There was a Scott Evans Nissan. This is small videos from a salesman that was there. His personal feedback, uh, his personal uh, timeline had these things. And I'm like, dude, I can't think there's, there's only one reason why you would see a Z Proto in a small town like that. And it's because you know what Z one got their eyes on it, man. I'm, I'm really looking forward to what I think is going to happen. Hopefully we'll see a video from Z one pretty soon, uh, kind of showcasing the, the time that they had with the car. I hope so. Uh, yeah. Brian, that's in your neck of the woods just away. But yeah. what do you think? What do you think about Z one getting their hands on the new Proto early for, for some design options and, and aftermarket support? I can't wait because as soon as I buy my car, I'm going to go to Z1 and say, give me all that. <laughs> I kind of thought so. I kind of yeah. thought so. And those Same. are the guys that do it. And, you know, I, we've known them since since the beginning. And, uh, you know, kudos Very to them. Uh, we've, we've mentioned this before, but kudos to them for everything that they do over there. They're always in development, um, especially with the off-road uh, market too, as well. I'm so glad that they kind of stepped into that and um, they're just growing and growing and growing and we wish them all the best and uh, to the moon. So <laughs> to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> so. But. Awesome, dude. You got some uh, other news that we got to go through, Mike? I do. I do. All right. So uh, let me share my screen for a second here. I got two quick pieces of information from Nissan, uh, what they've been doing here in the last two weeks. So the oh. this is the, uh, the first article. Talking about a, a chip shortage, microchip shortage. Now, we've mentioned this in the past on the show, uh, kind of giving you a little bit of an update of what, what auto manufacturers are, are, are doing as a whole in response to this. And then we're also going to talk about what Nissan is doing though. But uh, to kind of sum up the article, what's happening is that uh, obviously the material to make microchips uh, is at, at, a, at a shortage right now. So it, it's uh, really hard. You, <laughs> you, you got to have it. I mean, if you don't have the material, then you've got a shortage, a part shortage, and you, you just can't leave uh, vehicles, you know, without these parts. So the production is being hindered by uh, many manufacturers uh, uh, globally uh, because of the shortage. Um, what some people are doing, what, what some manufacturers are actually doing right now, they're actually essentially salvaging the sales that they do have. Uh, for example, for the microchips that they do have or the ones that they are producing, they're allocating those microchips to the cars and the certain uh, models that they have that are more profitable. So at least they can maintain their sales and keep the lights on until the shortage is, is resolved. So um, that's what's one uh, tactic that uh, auto manufacturers are doing. Uh, I'll give you an example too. Nissan is actually cutting navigation systems. They're, new models, uh, new cars these days, they uh, rely more and more and more on uh, microchips. Just to give you an example, if you can see my screen. This chart here is talking about, oh my God, what happened? This chart talks about the reliance that car manufacturing has on microchips. You know, 20 years ago, only about 18% of the components there had electronics uh, related to it. Now you're over 45%, or I'm sorry, 40%, and it's just growing within the next decade, just in, in the future here. So um, some of those features are being uh, cut out temporarily. Uh, to give you an example, though, Nissan, uh, they have a navigation system uh, as an option on some models. And they're actually cutting that option out temporarily for over a third of their model line. And that's just an attempt to do that to get these cars out onto dealership, uh, the, the dealer uh, sh showrooms. And then uh, another example is that there's a rumor that Nissan actually flew microchips from the manufacturing plant in India to a uh, manufacturing plant in the U.S. on a chartered cargo flight just to help with production. So they're literally flying these things in uh, as, a, as urgently just to keep the production lines going. So uh, just a number of ways that uh, manufacturers and Nissan are responding to this shortage, though. Uh, Brian, you said that uh, you what you normally do on a daily basis. Your job is has to do with microchips, doesn't it? Not not microchips. It's automated warehousing. But yeah, it's it's a global shortage on just about everything. Unless you need a quarter twenty bolt, there's a chance it's on back order somewhere. 
Uh, I mean, from PLCs, controllers. I had to air freight three containers of metric I beams mm-hmm. just so I wouldn't have to ship them by sea to, to mitigate the production delay. Hmm. Air freighting steel? Really? I mean, this is what we're doing to mitigate the production delays and troubles. We're air freighting steel I-beams. So, yeah, microchips make way more sense to air freight than I-beams. But (laughs) but everybody's doing it. So, yeah, it's it's tough. It's, It's impacting projects and sales and everybody. It really is, man. And, and they're not showing much. Um, they're saying it's going to get worse before it gets better. So they're hoping that uh, by the end of this year or first quarter of 2022, uh, we'll start to see uh, us coming out of this hole uh, and, and, and having uh, production, uh, having all the model line, all the model options uh, on the floor at the same time. So for those of you that are in the market for a new uh, Nissan or Infiniti, and you're not finding out there. Just have some patience. Uh, it'll they'll, they'll they'll find their way there eventually. So this is the reason why. Uh, Good article, man. Hey, uh, we got to go back to uh, some of our viewers. Um, and yes, we do. Talked a little bit about the um, uh, the new Z and their thoughts on it. Looked like Sean Buck chimed in today. He did. He did. What did he say here? He goes uh, headlights. Uh, just don't love everything else. Styling is nice. So we've got a guy who thinks the headlights. Uh, we'll see. I like the, personally. I like the headlights. What about what about you, Miles? I want to see them up front. Honestly, it's like I, I've seen them like you know a couple 30, 40, 50 times. But it just I, I want to kind of get my my eyes on them and get my I want to see it in the flesh. You know, because you you always do that when you see it in pictures. And but you know, certain cars at certain angles, they just that's what it is. That's what sells it. And it's just that, that sexy line that just does it for me. So yeah, you know, I kept the jury's kind of out a little on the headlights still, I I think as a, as an overall thing, but then again, it's like sometimes with everything that's happening in development with cars, headlights, beams, um, you know, everything that's out there with the HID developments, Yeah. Who you know, you could be in that car and the next thing you know, it's like daylight. You drive in those cars. It's like, <laughs> well, hell, I'll take that. You know, if it's uh, if it's, it's a headlight game's on fire too now. I mean, I, headlight game is on fire. That was your uh, old uh, world, Mike. A little bit. You know, I, I've had some pretty goofy headlights on my car even. Uh, I've I've <laughs> I've toned down a little bit though, but uh, but it is strong though. So I mean, I, I, I personally though, I think uh, the headlights aren't too bad. I like them. Uh, but you know, there is going to be some headlight manufacturer that's going to come out within you know, months or weeks after the debut with some Z1 put out, put out a new headlight option. So well, who yeah. knows, man? Yeah. I did like Just, what, what, uh, what Brent had to say. Brent said, uh, I hope they bring back the old school colors. Uh, oh, yeah. I agree. I think eventually there should be some sort of heritage paint option. I mean, I remember some older colors there. I always loved the green that they had. Uh, oh, midnight purple. I don't know. Purple, midnight midnight, purple. Oh, you're talking about Z32 colors now too. You're talking <laughs> Brickyard, Brickyard, Brickyard. Well, Brickyard, Brickyard wasn't yeah. a bad color. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Calsonic blue. Come on, or the championship blue. Come on. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so that was a that was an epic color too, as well. You know, the CRP from the Z32 and uh, the Z31. They had it in there. Cherry red pearl. Dude, yeah. The CRP. That was a nice, nice color. That um, some of those old gun metals, like the gun metal that came out in the uh, what was it? Uh, the 350Z. That uh, charcoal gray, it was called something. I forgot what it was. Well, you've got right. Silverstone, you got liquid aluminum. Silverstone, booyaka That's, That's what color yeah. my car is. I know, it's my favorite color. It looks good, man. All right. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. if you ever want to sell it, you know, just say. <laughs> Everything's for sale. <laughs> Everything's for sale. <laughs> all, right, all, right. all right, so we got to move well, on to motorsports here yes, a little we bit. Do. Um, you know, we're not going to cover too much. Uh, we're just going to cover the big heavies today. So uh, I'm going to go right into uh, what happened with Super GT. Now, Super GT had a really big um, uh, week. You know, uh, Super GT is just massive on a scale that we just have to kind of get used to. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, right. we have to drink again. Go <laughs> by. I was like, oh, no. That's the but, one I'm uh, looking for. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So. 
Oh, don't worry about it. It's fine. So uh, this was actually round two of Super GT in 2021. Um, it actually just happened here uh, recently. Um, let me see here. So it just happened the other weekend. Um, so this yeah. is Nissan's take on it from their uh, Nissan um, website on YouTube. Um, but yeah, they actually had a, a reasonably well weekend. Um, this was actually out at the uh, Fuji Speedway um, for round two. Um, ne the 500 class, we've talked about this before, 500 yep. class is, is doing okay, but they're just kind of, they have really stiff competition up with Toyota. Um, the race itself, not a lot of bad news to report overall, just kind of a strong racing weekend. Um, you know, Nissan actually put their best foot forward. Here's some footage of it. Uh, YouTube, if you if you search it out, I usually do it like Super GT 2021. I'll do like round one, round two. They also have the live footage on it. Um, if you follow us on the Nissan Nerd Podcast on Facebook, um, like I said, we usually will put you a link out there if there's going to be a racing weekend, and we'll kind of let you know everything that's kind of going on. But, God, I've been wanting to go to one of these for like the longest time and um, just trying to check it out. Brian, have you had an opportunity to kind of check any of this stuff out or follow it at all? No, uh, I was stuck in Europe a couple of years ago and was able to watch uh, a prototype class that runs the VQ45 at the Red Bull ring. That was kind of cool. That's the closest Nissan racing I've seen. But I haven't seen any of the Super GT stuff. <laughs> I, I I would I would um, place money on the fact that if I look behind you, you probably have a few of these models behind you, <laughs> right? Some of the old hey, GZ cars. Safe waste. Safe, safe wager. <laughs> and yeah, but this is just a, a hell of an event. They did really good. I'm going to show you some results from the last week um, okay. that we had going on. Let me show that to you. But the 300 series, um, they which I talked about before. Um, the 500 series, um, we're doing okay. Um, I think when we pulled everything out, the Nismo GT500 came out in fifth place. NSX was a surprising first place on the 500 series. Um, and then we've got the Supras coming up in second and third. Honda NSX coming in at fourth. And then the uh, the Craft Sports Motul Nissan GTR came in in fifth. And then we kind of made our way down. My Calsonic boys, ninth place. Not too great for the 500, but still... You know, a hell of a weekend. 300, totally different story. Um, this college, the realized Nissan Automobile Technical College, they came out in seventh, but they've been doing really, really well um, as far as placement, as far as placing in the last round. Um, they In fifth place, the surprising was the Impul GTR. Uh, they came out and actually ended up taking fifth place. Um, so kudos to them. Uh, if you get a chance, go back and watch round two. Um, I would uh, highly suggest continuing to follow this. We'll do our best to give you all the coverages and the links as we continue to move forward with the series. Cool, man. Cool, cool. Now, I'm glad to hear about that, man. I really think that, uh, you know, that's the one thing, too. I, I've been so caught up in this Formula E that I really need to get back into GT, the Super GT on this one. I'm glad you're taking a hold, uh, taking the taking charge on this one, man. <laughs> so uh, you followed um, Formula E. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. I did. I did. I'm going to hit you with some GT, uh, with some uh, Formula E knowledge here. What's been going on here? So let me go ahead and share my screen. I'm going to let this run in the background, but I've got a, an awesome recap for you guys. Uh, let's press play on this one. All right, man. So rounds five and six of the Formula E had been happening uh, just this last weekend, April 24th and 25th. And it took place in Spain at the, uh, Circuit, Ricardo, Tormo, and Valencia. This is the first track that Formula E has actually uh, participated in. Honestly, most all the all the tracks so far this year have been street courses. So to actually get on a traditional track was definitely a, a change uh, for for the the league this season so far. Take a look at what's happening here, too, man. They had a super it's a super tight chicane here. Um, Obviously, it was a very wet day. What I'm showing you here is footage from round five. Uh, in terms of our boys, Buemi and Rowland, uh, Buemi went ahead and qualified fourth. However, he did not finish. Literally, it was within about the first three minutes of the race. Uh, he was hit from behind, got stuck, and essentially had technical issues after that. So he did not finish uh, with round five. However, Rowland 
Rowland was cheated, man. I'm going to tell you about this. Now, he qualified eighth, and he got started here. And what you'll see near the end of this video is that he actually finished in second position. Uh, in second position. However, what's happened is literally half the grid, half of the drivers, had a miscalculation on how much power they're allowed to use in the race. They used half a percent more energy than they're allowed to. And because of that, they were disqualified. So Rowland, however, he finished P2. He was outside of the uh, the, the qualifications to, to, to even be uh, to even finish at all. And he was disqualified. Was was super, that? super unlucky. <laughs> what was that? Rowland actually got a uh, knock back. What was it? 10 places round four. Round three he had or four, a pit remember that? penalty. Yes, yeah, he, was doing, penalty. he was doing that. so well. Yeah. Had a pit penalty. I think that was uh, about three, three or four weeks ago. Uh, rounds uh, uh, three and four, I believe. Yeah. Just this season so far has been, you know, again, I'll say unlucky right now for the the Nissan E Dams team. But uh, you know, they're performing fairly well, except for when the times either uh, something happens, uh, you know, that's beyond their control in some in many of these cases. So. Um, <laughs> That was round five. Again, I'm going to just run out to the end, though. Round six was the next day. This was a back-to-back -back race, uh, two rounds back-to-back. -back. Boemi started in ninth, finished in 11th, and Rowland uh, started in eighth and went ahead and finished P4 in, in round six. So he, he's the only one who really brought points home for the team uh, this weekend. He brought in 12 points for Nissan. Uh, as a whole, uh, as a constructor, though, Nissan has actually declined from ninth position to 11th, mm -hmm. uh, which isn't, isn't – you know, nobody likes to hear that, though. But, again, it's just because of the string of bad luck that they've had. Uh, again, last year they were in second. They they finished in second. So, uh, it's normally not over they till do it's, very well. Yeah, it's not uh, over till it's over. So It's not over <laughs> till it's over. There are There is four rounds left. And the next race is actually happening this weekend in uh, Monaco, which is, of course, another street track, a legendary street, cat, street track uh, in, in France there in Monaco. Um, some good news about that. Uh, three things that you want to know about this race coming up this weekend regarding Nissan. First one is, is that Buemi is a two-time winner of Monaco. He's no stranger to this track. He's he's good at what he does. He's he's a he's got a good record. So that that's looking really really good. The second thing you want to know is that the uh, the track typically for Formula E, the Monaco track, has been. Uh, not how we always remember it, let's say, in the F1 days, the, the, in, in F1. It's always an abbreviated or shorter track, usually. This year, it's going to be the exact same track that the F1 teams use. So we're going to see a longer track. Uh, should be pretty exciting to see that. And the third thing is, this is actually some really good news. Nissan is actually debuting their second-generation powertrain uh, for the EDAMS uh, uh, program. So it's, it's going to be a whole new power plant. It's got upgraded software, hardware. Of course, it's very proprietary. That's really all they told us. But uh, provided how things go, it's going to be a, another boost for them. So uh, this weekend in Monaco is going to be, uh, it, at, even at this point, it's, I'm very optimistic. Uh, they've got a good driver that's very experienced on this track. And they got a new powertrain that, you know, by all means, with, with all the research I'm sure they've done, is going to give them a huge advantage, uh, an even greater advantage. So uh, that's what's happening here. Uh, let me see if I, if you saw it. Did you see it, by the way? The uh, uh, right there. Oh, what do you got? You see it right there? Uh, oh man, the guy picking his nose again. <laughs> just... you see how... What's that? No, just messing with you. What I wanted to show you is the uh, look. Look into your left, your left corner there, and you're gonna look. The, uh, the amount of power that was used uh, again, zero percent, zero. You know, they Rowland was in second, but had zero percent power. He was still rolling. He still had power. It's not like his car died on the side of the track. He was still going, but he uh, again used more power than he was allowed. It would have been such a great finish, man. But because of that, he uh, did not score any points that day. So again, it was uh, such a crazy thing to see. Th these Formula E rules are pretty. Uh, they're new to me, man. But they are kind of wacky. Still trying to get used to them, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a a, a different series um, that we just kind of got to. Uh, there's so many things. You've got power levels. You've got super boost. You've got fan boost that you have to kind of talk about. I mean, there is so many like 
just variables that can kind of come into it. It's it's more akin with I always tell people when they when they ask me about it, it's like kind of like Formula One, but with the uh, with Mario Kart rules kind of thrown in there. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. So it is. Um, it is. That's that's not the only news. You um, now Centra Cup Series actually made an official post that they're going to be potentially throwing something out here soon. You found that right? They did just yesterday, and you can see it here. I'm going to zoom in on this. It was a very, very short announcement, and it says, Stay tuned. The revised 2021 calendar is coming out. So, uh, of course, we, Miles, you and myself, we, we are following the Micro Cup. The, this uh, season, uh, Micro Cup season, should be starting this month so at some time. So, the... Uh, Calendar will be coming out soon, and as soon as it comes out, we're going to share it with you guys, and we will we'll follow it. We're going to go ahead and uh, again, it seems like a really awesome. Uh, uh, we're super excited about it. We've been talking about it for for a number of months now since we heard about it. So mm-hmm. since the evolution of it, um, you know. So yeah, I, I hope yeah. it I hope it gets legs, and I hope it starts doing some great things. So, yeah. hey Brian, just wondering, man, had had you heard about this uh, Centra Cup at all? No, I've not. No. It's it's out of Canada. It's weird. I mean, it's 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 only out of Canada, but essentially you can go to a dealer and buy a spec, um, uh, spec Sentra vehicle, essentially uh, roll cage seat and all that. And then this this racing league is is very grassroots. Again, Nissan is supporting it, but also it began out of a Micra Cup, which was um, Miles. What would you call it? it close to a Versa, just the smallest. You know, basically, yeah, you yeah it's been, it's a popular model that they've had out for a number of years. But yeah, for us here in the states, versus it's probably its closest cousin. So yeah, yeah. It, it's still a bit smaller than a Versa. Oh yeah, oh even it's smaller tiny. than a Versa. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're Americans, it. right? So we need this. <laughs> so <laughs> more power, more power. More power. Baby. But yeah, it's a super cool series, man. I'm, uh, we've been super excited about it. So we're pretty interested if, uh, if something comes of it. We want to see if we can get some good coverage from it. So, Yep, absolutely. Glad man. to see Nissan back racing. So. <laughs> Finally, right? So, yeah. yeah. I, I like but, to see that too. Just be, the fact that it, the, the entry, the cost to enter a, a league like that, it's, it's meant to be the, one of the lowest, relatively lowest costs uh, to, to enter these type of uh, racing. So, uh, it really allows, again, for the grassroots guys like us, uh, a, a chance just to kind of get their name out there and, and make an impression. Yep. <laughs> that's yeah. that's where some of the best start is lo- low dollar spec racing, like <laughs> Scheme. There are others that just they come from Miata or some other low low entry cost spec series and just rise to the top. Exactly. So. You know, Brian, I wanted to kind of bring something up here. Now, we've known you for a number of years. Uh, We've talked about this before, but, you know, I I know you're always doing a lot of things uh, for charity. Uh, Obviously, you've been uh, running Z Days for a number of years, and you're a huge Z nerd like uh, like we are. But um, I I want to talk about something that I got here a while back, um, and I'll bring it up here. But Mm -hmm. I want to ask a quick question. So oh. why is why is this man? Uh, you got him doing push-ups. So, uh, and thank you for trying. So, you know, sadly, we're still losing about twenty veterans a day to suicide due to issues and conditions with PTSD. Uh, that's twenty too many, and this is just an attempt to feel a little bit of pain. So you'd have some empathy, someone else in pain. And while 22 push-ups is a token, it at least makes you think about somebody else for the 20 to 20, 20 seconds to 20 minutes. It takes you to do 22 push-ups. But Mike did a good job. You can't pick on him. Man, I, I tell I'm you what. I'm not picking on him. It yeah, was yeah. A good <laughs> you know, normally yeah. I, I don't participate in – like it reminds me of back in the day, like chain letters and emails and things like that back yeah. in the day. But the fact that it came from you and I knew the cause that you were pushing was was so uh, genuine and the efforts that you were making to it. I I I, I had no choice, man. I I, I knew that I was going to do that from day one, and that's probably oh, yeah. the only thing I've ever done in the last year 
consistently. And uh, yeah, man, it's all props to you, man. Th- thanks for, for putting me through that, man. I, 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 I actually enjoyed the challenge. Well, good. I mean, it's, it's, it was appreciated that you did it. I probably went through three or 400 people before I got 22 to do it. So thank yeah. you. Oh, you're welcome, man. It, uh, no, I, I hear you, man. It was, it's, um, again, it's a noble cause though. I mean, I, I'd really, uh, like the fact mm-hmm. that, uh, uh, you know, doing it miles. I tried getting you miles to do it. You, you were, you were gloating. You were doing them with one foot in the air and miles. Was, I uh, yeah. Guess, jacked, I think I lost the, it, uh, you know? I, yeah, I did it and I lost the theme of it and I, I shouldn't have, um, honestly, I, I, I think I got sidetracked with something personal that was happening in my life at the time. And, um, um, unfortunately, but, uh, yeah, it's a great cause, you know, Brian, I've, I've known you for a number of years and you've always been a, uh, um, a very passionate person about, uh, what's happening with the, uh, with our military veterans. So kudos to you, um, for everything that you do, which is why we've always tried to support you as long as we've known you. So again, thank you. You're welcome. That. And thank you. But, I want to kind of switch this and I want to talk about your Z nerddom right now. So okay. you, you yes. have a track beast that Mike di- has done a bunch of research on. I went I've ahead. I'll seen my... it. Yeah. yeah. And talk about it. Okay. Um, so the only thing left Nissan is the roof skin and a pillar covers in the door handles. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. Give me more. That's it. That's it. That's uh, so it's got a a mildly tweaked uh, LS3 6.2 liter, making right at 500 horsepower. The car is 130 millimeters wider than stock. I'm running a 12 by 18, sorry, 18 by 12 inch wheel square with a 345 tire. Uh, man- manual brakes. Um, the old electronics are fuel injection. That's it. There's there's no ABS, no nannies. Um, let's see what else. I did all the wiring, did all the fabrication. I did not do the cage or the paint, but I did everything else myself. Stitch welded the body. Uh, made the motor mounts, transmission mounts. I, those are Corvette C6 brakes on 370Z rotors. Uh, the front hub is actually off of a R35 GTR rear hub. Gives me a nice 28 millimeters of offset plus way more bearing. It's it's the most fun you can have with your clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, you know, I've seen this thing on the track at, at a, you know Z Nationals and a, a couple of other events, ZCon, and uh, man, I mean. This thing's a beast. I mean, it just it it it, it screams. It kind of gr- makes this. Uh, it, it just kind of brings out the animal in you, man. You just kind of you hear it like, oh man, you got to turn your neck. You got to you got to see what's beast. happening, man. It just demands that uh, detention because it and, and rightfully oh. so, man. This thing's just a, a, a track monster. Well, it's got a, a four speed NASCAR dog box, so you will hear oh. the gears. You uh, ain't messing it, around. No, uh, it's it's. The transmission weighs 38 pounds. You could literally curl the transmission. Magnesium case. Um, top speed right now, 168, 170. And I'll hit that at Road Atlanta, VAR, probably Roebling. Have not been to Roebling since this uh, version of the car. But uh, it's, it's taken some get used to. Of course, now it's right-hand drive. Uh, yes. And that's not a JDM front clip. That is the only JDM part is the steering rack. So even the front knuckles, I had to modify to get the tie rods on the front of the axle versus behind the axle. Oh. So it's it's all custom nonsense I built. I uh, I remember asking you about this car um, again. I think it was at ZCon. You know, it's it's right hand drive, and I always I think I asked you. Does it unsettle you as a driver? You know, how long did it take you to become comfortable, right? You know, driving, especially the, you know this this beast of a car. You know, right hand drive. And I think you said the answer was 
that you've been a, a track instructor for so long that you're used to sitting in the right hand side that it's it really just became natural uh and it made a lot of sense man because i mean not only are you a driver though but you you put in tons and tons of volunteer time at track days to instruct and uh and i mean essentially lead these tracks i think you help i mean you you were the track uh lead instructor for uh zcon uh, the zcon i was a, i was uh, a part of i believe Atlanta. Uh, right? I, yeah I've, I've done i've helped several zcons many many z nationals i mean event steward for Tarot sports car club um and then i go to other track events just to hang out but those are the ones i am a steward for and i instruct for a couple a dozen other event or act, uh, groups so one thing about right-hand drive, when you're doing 160 miles an hour in the right seat with a green student at a brand new C7 Corvette, you're already thinking, turn, turn, turn. So all you have to do is just act on it. <laughs> it sounds easy. He makes yeah. it sound easy, right? Yeah. All instructors do that. It's easy. Yeah. It's well, easy. And, 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 you know, you do this too, right? Turn. <laughs> and, Oh, I thought you were talking about something else. I thought it went from yeah, this to this. Yeah. So, I thought we were, I thought we we're talking about the bee hole uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> factor. Depends on what's doing. You get some really heads. Oh, we got to chime in from Dustin. Oh, did we? Check it out here. Let's see, let's see what we got oh. here from Dustin. Why no unlimited GTA for shits and giggles? Just haven't had time, Dustin. Uh, <laughs> Honestly, the paddock is full. The schedule is full, but I'll be there. We'll do some track time. <laughs> well, we know you're a Z Day fan. We know you're a Z fanatic. Now, I want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the events that you're a part of. Now, obviously, you're you're f funding Z Days. So, um, go ahead, Mike. I know you want to kind of talk about this a little bit. Sure did. Um, you know, so the whole reason we're here, too, is just, uh, we definitely want, want to hear more about Z-Days. It's happening very, very soon. I believe we're two weeks away. But in general, you know, we were just talking about the history of Z-Days. Um, again, how, how you said uh, uh, you essentially took it over about 2008. Just um, I was wondering, you know, for the, for the last, well, in this case, well, 17 years, it's always been held at the Fontana Resort. And uh, again, people have tons of feedback on that one. It's it's been a good one, and it's it's had its its hiccups here and there. But in general, like how did how did Z Day start? Was there what was the reason why? And also, like how did you find Fontana Resort in the first place? Like wh why there? All right. So again, Andy Morris and Morris Morgan started the event right when the 350 came out, and they wanted a driving event. So the Tale of the Dragon was right there. Yeah. So in 2004, 74 people, Andy was a good friend of mine, and I was still driving my Ford Lightning. Now, Jessica, I was prepping it for drag racing, all this straight line stuff. And it's like, come on up to my car show. I'm like, and I'm not a car show guy. So I drive up, show up, and it's a bunch of Z cars. Now I'm in a white Ford Lightning. I thought, I am going to catch so much flack. I wrote school. We went and drove the Dragon. Andy and I ran off and left everybody. Again, I'm driving a 5,000-pound pickup truck. Yeah. We just left them and um, hung out with some friends, made some friends. And the next year, I was like, Andy, if you need help, I'll help. So I kind of became staff. And then in 05, I bought the 350. And then in 08, I took over. And I'm going to apply to SAE to get Z days as a unit of measure of time because the, the reference is always remember three Z days ago when X happened. I, I think Z days is going to be the new unit of time. <laughs> You've been doing it for a long time, though, man. I mean, I yeah. myself and Miles, uh, we, we've both been to it. Um, tons of tons of events uh, throughout the week that, that mm -hmm. you do. Um, I know, I remember seeing pictures in the beginning, the, the type of events I'll have. I mean, y'all were doing, because I mean, they had that, that uh, at the Fontana, you kind of have that, that main hall where they would have the dinners. Uh, but there would be like poker nights, I think. That's kind of how it started. Uh, well, we'll start and it just evolved. Like, yeah. yeah like, so, you know, when you have 300 people, you could do a casino night. 
Yeah. But when you have a thousand people, you just want to have places to put them. So as the event grew, the parties and the events had to scale with it. So there used to be a block party at someone's cabin every year. And is he one? <clears throat> and um, <laughs> that just turned into a big party until we had 500 people in a cabin yard. So that's why we had to move that to the deck. Uh, you know, things like the hockey tournament. We've got a three-on-three slip and slide hockey. Whew. Yeah, I mean, come come break your butt because it's going to happen. <laughs> I mean, we just flick it down with baby oil, baby shampoo, and water, and good luck. Have fun with it. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, we we have a driving movie, which you know, on that baseball field, you could have as many people as you want. So, and honestly, we ran out of ideas. There's just the lack of resources. Uh, the remoteness. There's a lot of things we just like. We were begging people for ideas because we've done it all. We could either redo it or we have to do something else. So the idea bucket was empty. Yeah, it's it's always involved for sure. Is that every year? And I do remember those those posts where you would ask people, "What do you want to have? What do you want to see?" Mm-hmm. Uh, every year that I went, there was always something new. I mean, I think uh, there's always been a core set of events. Like there's a car show. There, of course, the dinners, deck parties, pretty much tradition. Uh, it seems like it has been, but the there's always those, competition. The exhaust competition, right? And then there were those other events that kind of revolved around it. The the kind of uh, the, the crazier ones, like you said, with the the slip and slides. And uh, I remember there was that one hill just past the uh, the main building where I think they had didn't they have like three wheelers. They would buy big wheels and roll Trip down tracks. that thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Suicide. Yeah. Yeah. Suicide. I, yeah. God. Yeah. I mean, just going back through, it's like, I just, I remember just almost every night was just pure debauchery. And like at night you would just, just drunken craziness. Like the Z one boys back then, like John Parham. And I guess I'm calling you out, John, like you guys would be like hauling ass in their little, I don't even remember it was some ruckuses and like little ATVs and they're just like flying past and drinking. And they'll stop. Hey, have some moonshine. Meow. And you're like, Man, no. and then just everything's just going crazy all night long. And then the next morning, I don't know why, but it just seemed to always be the exhaust party or the exhaust competition was always on the night. You had the worst, the, the most live experience. And you also had the worst hangover <laughs> ever. <laughs> And then next morning you would have the exhaust competition and it was just like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I don't I'm know. Sure that sounds premeditated. Yeah. Uh, it's just, well, I mean, it's, it's probably one of the few events where you do have to check your check liver light because it will <laughs> go off at least once in the weekend. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. I've, <laughs> I've had uh, more than my fair share of, uh, of interesting nights at, uh, at, uh, let me see here. Oh, yeah. Uh, I said Graham Hobbs. Here, let me share something with that. you. Okay. Oh, Miles will share something here. Let's see what we got <sighs> here. Is this you? Yeah. Is that you or is that me? That That's is it. you. Uh, I'm sorry about that. There Are you, you go. <laughs> That's... <laughs> I don't even recall that night. I will just That's put that on night. Perfect That night. was the perfect night. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Interesting <laughs> night altogether. Um, you know, and that's kind of like the rhythm of Z days. Um, I think you put it, uh, how did you put it? Something about a uh, college party. What was that? What was that quote? It's, you a, used? It, it's a frat party with cars, but Graham Hobbs had it nailed. He said it, it's a drinking event with a driving problem. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yeah. Uh, oh my funny. God. All right. I think it got out of control for a while there. So funny story that you posted that picture from Nina. I actually married Nina and Tony. Oh. I was a celebrant for the wedding. Are you ordained so, for thirty-five dollars from the? Uh, I am an ordained hot mess. I myself am also an ordained minister in twelve states. Recently down to ten, but that's for legal yep, purposes. Yep. But yeah. uh, an open warrant. Kudos. You know, I was actually gonna uh, one night. Me and Mike were drinking. I almost married him to a couple. At a, at a bar we were at. Yeah. So, you know, with uh, great power comes great responsibility. And I have mm. no responsibility whatsoever. 
So. I was left unsupervised. <laughs> yeah. They should never give me a license to marry people. But. He was marrying everybody left and right. I, like this uncon- They didn't even want to be you, married. You, just... you pay my bar tab, I'm going like, to take care guess of what? <laughs> You're married. You, just... <laughs> you want to hey, come at me like that? You're married. <laughs> Boom. Like, what? You don't have the power to do that. You do. Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. Right. Um, so what do you got going on? What's popping off for this year, Brian? So this year, we're really, it's a reset. I like to say, we're, we're moving venues. We're going to Boyne Rock. Um, and a little story, well, uh, facts. We, we outgrew Fontana. You know, we were having 1,000 people with 221 beds. There weren't that many couples. <laughs> there was a lot of big spoon, little spoon going on. There was a lot the of counter. spooning. A lot of spooning. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of spooning. Too much uh, spooning. Forced spooning, even. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> uh, unsupervised spooning. But it was just, and we couldn't grow. We've been landlocked for a decade. Yeah. And, you know, I really wanted to bring people like John Morton and Steve Millen in, but I really didn't think I could invite them to somewhere like Fontana Village. One, it's hard to get to. It's so remote. But at Blowing Rock... It's it's gorgeous. It's a tourist town. There's stuff to do. So there was 221 beds at Fontana Village. There's over 4,000 rentable units within 15 miles of Blowing Rock. Jesus. So we're going to start over this year about 200. Find out where the weak points are. Just firm those up for next year, and I can go back to four, five, six, seven hundred. And in five years. Hey, let's embrace the entire brand. Dodson, Nissan, Infinity, three, four, or more wheels. Bring it. Just well, if we made a bike, bring that too, but just bring it. And I really would like to reach out to some of the other events and clubs, the Frontiers, the Titans, the, the Maximum People, the so S chassis cars, R chassis cars, and just see if we can all come together. There we go. I was just thinking about that. You know, I mean, honestly, like, let's call it this. This is actually me. And I'm pretty sure there's a cigarette burn in the shirt or <laughs> potentially still vomit on it. But nonetheless, I broke this out of my glass case. It's still one of my favorite shirts uh, that you guys ever produced. And actually, uh, we didn't. Nissan, Nissan like produced a shirt. Yeah. And this is what is Tochigi before they shut it down. So mm-hmm. is that right? Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. If I remember correctly, maybe. I don't know. I think, but, uh, I think you're right. Um, so uh, this is, I actually think this is one of Steve Yeager's last years. He put together this um, this shirt with you guys. Ah, I miss him. And uh, he, he, he was actually on a while back. But yeah, I mean, honestly, you guys, um, you guys have really thrown a hell of an event. And, um, you know, I've, I've, I truly had a blast at it. I cannot wait for you guys to evolve. I think the natural progression for you guys is to really develop into a Nissan Days event. Uh, oh, yeah. Day change for sure. Yeah. Uh, no, I, already uh, bought, I already bought the URL. I'll sell it to you cheap. But nonetheless, <laughs> um, somebody's going to do that right now while we're talking. So, uh, you know what? I've, I'm going to charge you $4 billion dollars for it. I've so. got 10 domains already. I just see what... See what it is. Yeah, I mean, so, we'll keep the LLC. We'll do a DBA and just change the name. And that way, you shake off all the bad publicity. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, your your event is, uh, you know, it, I have to say, I've been to a lot of car events and I've been to a lot of Nissan events, and the community aspect of it, even with me and Mike, when we used to run Nismo Fiesta, I mean, we would do a really great job with it, but it was never to that level of um, fan fan base that you guys had. I mean, we tried to mimic that, but your yours is truly genuine. In oh, yeah, that there's, capacity. No way, yeah. there's no way. I mean, you just had, there was a lot of advantageous things that kind of worked for you as far as Hill of the Dragon. I mean, you had the home base for Z1 and they were super supportive of the event. And also the whole Zoom community was event. So you really had like kind of a perfect storm of the best um, opportunity to kind of put uh, an event like that together. And kudos to you. Cause I I've, we've me and Mike have both put on events before and we've, it always, it always looks like it's flawless, 
but behind it, it's just, we know the madness that it takes to run these events and kudos to you and your staff, all, all those hardworking yeah. people that have had to work all these years to put together uh, an event and kind of build your brand up to what it is now today. So, uh, I mean, I thank you for the kind words, but it, it more goes to the quality and enthusiasm of our volunteers and our partners because I, it, as event organizers, you and I both know that whatever hours we put into it is into it, but it's that help at the event that actually makes it good for everybody. And typically we see people attend one year, uh, they'll come for the dragon. And then yeah. the next year they come for the people. And then the third year they're volunteering. And we, we have, a, we enjoy a huge volunteer core and they feel like they own it which is perfect because if they own it, they care more for it. And we just, we, we let them run with it. It's, we, it is what it is because our, our, our byline says it's by enthusiast for enthusiast. Yeah. And I think that's what shows, I think that's what separates it as well. I mean, it's our family reunion you want to come to every year. Yeah. It, I like what you said there. You're, you're you're giving the enthusiasts a sense of ownership in this event as being volunteers and being in charge of some of these sub events that are happening throughout the. You know, it's a four day event too. I mean, Miles, I mean, me and you, we've done maybe two days, two and a half tops, but a a four day event, uh, especially this year's four day event, that is a huge undertaking. I mean, mm -hmm. again, yeah, volunteer wise, that's a that's a huge amount that you need, and uh, I'm glad to hear that the that the enthusiasts that base is. Uh, you know, giving you with enough uh, manpower, I, I, like, like, as you like to say, sweat equity being put into this event, you know. Oh, we, so, we, av we average 150 to 200 volunteers, and it's just amazing. I mean, it's just, we couldn't do it without them. So if any of you guys are watching, thank you. I, <laughs> I drink one to you, but I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, Brian, I wanted to ask one last thing is, so if anybody's listening right now and they still want to attend Z days, they've got a little bit of time. We got it coming up May 20th and 23rd. Is that right? That's correct. What's the website so right now? It's Z days, Z D A Y Z com. Uh, there's the events. Yep. Uh, every, and we've gone back to a all inclusive registration. So it's one twenty five. And so if you hit the register now button under the logo, oh, that yes. too, either one. Yep. Sure. So the event pass is 125. That gets you everything, including two meals and a shirt. Uh, I did put the shirts up on Facebook today, so you can check those out. Oh, okay. Uh, the, the race is additional, but that gets you a race bib and will have some cool raffle prize to give away for the 5K. Typically, it's been a set of tires, but... We don't know that yet. Uh, car shows additional, disc golf tournament, and then there's additional apparel as well. And again, you can go to our Facebook group and look at the apparel I just posted today. I'm uh, looking, there it is. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen on that one too for you guys. Oh, I just let it, I'm sorry. That's the one there? Yep. Right. So that's the, the gray ones, the volunteer shirt. The blue one's the event shirt, and we also have hoodies. Oh yeah, grabbing man. those sweet for proto Z's there, man. I like it. I like <laughs> it. Another order. For, oh, order one click for on myself. that. Click on that one, please. Yeah. So look at what we did. The sponsors are actually on the cars. Oh, yeah, I see it here. Yeah, Nissan, Nissan Z1, Carbotech, SBC, South Bend Plus. Oh, they look good. Those yeah. look really good. <laughs> so Redline Design out of Tampa did that design for me. So thank you guys if you're listening. Yeah. yeah. Kudos again, uh, May 20th through May 23rd. You still got time to register. You guys registering mm -hmm. up until the day of, right? Yep, all the way through. All the way through. Okay. All the way through. You could show up, boom, and still make mm -hmm. it. You just need to make sure that you've got your rooms and everything kind of set up. So if you're listening out there, you still got time. You still got time to plan it out in the North Carolina so, area. Of course. Yes. That blowing rock. It's a brand new venue. And I, this, this Chitala resort, is it Chitala? Chitala? Chitola, Chitola. Chitola. I'm sorry. Uh, I, got, oh, again, I, I just it, picked up the website there. Huh? What quick blurb about blowing rock. 
There are five breweries. Oh, don't do that. That 12, oh, my liver hurts. It hurts. Oh, okay. it, it's, my liver it, hurts you saying that. So you, you take Fontana and its remoteness and lack of options. You throw okay. that away and you put me in a town of 900 people with five breweries. <laughs> I mean, wow. oh, it's, there's two fudge shops, there's an egg roll shop. Get custom made egg rolls. <laughs> Diets go to hell in that town. But yes. <laughs> I guess we should grease the local law enforcement so we can get our Z friends out of jail uh, um, early mean, enough. <laughs> yeah, they, they actually have a lobster macaroni and cheese egg roll. Jesus Christ. That sounds Whoa. so American, but it's awesome. I mean, we'll yes. totally eat it. So. Oh. <laughs> It's a uh, a food orgasm, we'll call it yeah. like that. So mouthgasm. But then again, yeah. Thanks again, man. Uh, we really loved having you on. You know, uh, we before you go, we're getting close to the end of the show. I yeah. wanted to talk a little bit about a section that we all, um, little portion of our show that we sometimes will bring up, called back alley chat. And honestly, it gives us an opportunity to talk about your most personal uh, favorite Z days event or Z days experience. One story each, and I'm gonna go with Mike first. Oh, okay. Does it have to be wholesome, or can it be uh, no holes barred? Mm, there's kids. There's, DJs, there's not, not much wholesome there. There's not much wholesome. Go there's on. not much wholesome there. <laughs> okay, well, I'll I'll tell you the um, I'll have the the runner up. That'll be quick though. But the fun one uh, for me was my first my first year at Z Days. This was in 2015. Um, I was told in advance about how epic the deck party gets and the after parties. There's that section at Fontana that was known as Stonehenge. Uh, there you've got that bonfire and people kind of hanging out after the deck closes. People can kind of go out there and enjoy the rest of their night. And, um, my first time there, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a lightweight when it comes to having a drink or two. And, uh, so Cut to 4 a.m. and um, I uh, everybody's kind of ra- you know going back to their cabins. It's at the end of the night, and I had a, a buddy of mine. He was like, we were like bunk mates, and so we're like, all right, man, we're we're good friends. And I said, all right, man, well, I'll keep an eye on you. You keep an eye on me. Uh, it's all good. At 4 a.m., everybody starts dispersing, going to bed, and I'm I'm dazed, and you know I'm, I've had a few. And I'm looking around. I go, "Hey, man, where, where did he go?" And I'm looking. I'm turning my neck. Where the hell is he? Can't find him. So I say, "All right, every man for himself." And I go. I jump in back of somebody's truck, and they drop me off at the cabin. And that was it. Uh, cut about an hour later. I get woken up by my my roommate, uh, the guy I was supposed to be looking for. And he goes, "Hey, man, where were you? What happened? Like, uh, why didn't you?" Uh, uh, you know, pick me up. Why didn't you uh, help me back to the cabin? I told him, I didn't see you. I, I, I didn't see you. I think I thought maybe you found a friend or whatever was going on, went off on your own. And he goes, no, I was passed out on the rock behind you. And I realized that when I was looking left and right, I wasn't looking directly behind me or down at all. <laughs> he was, he was sprayed out on the side of a rock and I just left him. And so he woke, he wakes up at five o'clock and he's got, to nobody there in a, in a fire that's starting to, that's already died down. And, uh, to me, that was the funniest, uh, moment that I remember just spending that, that first year there and that, that uh, 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 at, at Stonehenge there, uh, the, the runner up one was, was a lot of fun. I believe it was the following year. You had Chris Forsberg come in with a 370 drift car. And yeah, I literally turned part of that resort into a track for him to do some, some drifting skills, uh, amazing time i think he probably spent about what, 15 20 minutes just making tracks all over the place so yeah he uh, repaved that road what's that <laughs> he repaved that road that day he did he did it was amazing time i had the perfect spot you know right at a hill literally he was drifting above uh, underneath me at that point i mean i was right there man so brian you got a good story that sticks out in your mind i've got a bunch um, well, I know it's I'm hard for to, you. I'm, you've you've been at it for a minute, so yeah. I, I'm gonna go to one that uh, hit me in the heart. 
So, you know, we try to do a really nice auction for charity for the vets, um, for PTSD awareness. And, uh, and our charity for the last few years has been Wags for Tags. And they take uh, dogs out of kill shelters, train them to be service animals, and pair them with veterans who need that, that compatriot. They need that mission to take care of something else. And so, and that's been our charity for man, five or six years now. So, and we came up with this idea to make a quilt. And it was just going to be like a charity quilt. And the idea was that we would take make pa- panels out of Z-Day shirts. And I was actually missing some from some of the early years. And I just thought they were going to make it without it and we would just use something else. Pam Robinson out of Florida gave up her early year shirts for this quilt. And when I f- heard about it on stage, I just cried like a little girl with a skit in the eyes, like, oh, God, big pain. And uh, I mean, it just hit me in the heart. And to know that we have people in our group, our family, that care that much about other people in our family, it, it just it hits the heart just right. And I look like an idiot crying up there, and I had to drink a bunch of whiskey to stop. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> that one, that, I mean, there's a lot of good ones, but Pam, if you're listening, I, 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 I went out there and replaced her shirts. I had them printed one-offs. She got brand new shirts out of the deal, but the fact she gave them up for wax for tags hit me in the heart. That's awesome. I was there that year. I remember that. <laughs> that was amazing. I, I, uh, that was, I remember that moment. That was very, very awesome. Uh, that uh was a good moment there too. Um, glad to hear that. you mentioned wax for tags. I wanted to share that share their page too for those who are online. Take a look at their their. Be sure to add them. This are they also your charity for this year? Yes, and because of COVID, they have lost the majority of their fundraising. Hmm. So they are struggling, uh, even just to keep you know. They, it, it costs about three thousand dollars to rescue and train an animal. There's not been a lot of new animals rescued or trained in the last while. It's just trained water, so they're they're kind of stagnant and they need the help. So if you love dogs, and you love vets, reach out to Ronnie and Vivian. Five bucks, ten bucks. They, they won't say no. They'll say thank you, and we'll go hook them up this year as best we can. Again, we're going to be small because of COVID, but we're going to do everything we can to help them. Awesome, man. Right. Really good stuff. Awesome. You know, I wanted to say thank you uh, to Brian uh, for taking the time to come out to the uh, to the show here and spending some time with us. And, you know, to talk about the event, we feel it's important. You know, we're all about community here. And, dude, we're so excited about you um, really blowing up the event. And what we think is probably going to be your next um, reasonable step to move up the chain with evolving your event to a bigger event and then maybe even moving on to different platforms and bringing in the whole of the Nissan community. So kudos to you and thank you for your time today, Brian, um, for My coming pleasure. to talk about it. So, Oh, thanks, plus, thanks for having me. Plus, I miss yeah. talking to you, man. I haven't talked to you in for it's, in, a, in a solid minute. So. <laughs> yeah, but now you get to say your CD story. Oh, you yeah. don't want oh, you can get away with it, man. Thank you for calling you them out. Dude. Okay, can I just say this? You you can't throw like a, a heartfelt story and then you know that I'm just going to be all punk rock and just have some debauchery story. I can't send do that. It, it doesn't, it. Send it it doesn't it. flow. You're messing with the emotional flow. Uh, send it. Send it. Pull the band off. Uh, Pull a Cleman. Pull a Cleman. I, I think I've had this. I don't know. Z Days was just one. I think I've been to one and it was just. It was like, Jesus Christ, it was like the closest thing to Burning Man for me, man. It was like insane. <laughs> like, so the problem that that happens with me when I show up to an event, I don't know why I like, I poke the bear everywhere I go with the party structure. Yeah. 
So the Z1 boys obviously already had their stakes in with running that entire event as far as like having the bars and the alcohol. So I was like, you know what? I knew what I was going to run into. And Mike's told the story a million times because he absolutely loves this story. But uh, it's a funny one. I make my own liquor from time to time. So I knew from talking to you, and I, I'm a fan of moonshine, and because it's like the hardest of the hard, right? Of course, I can't party with just a normal. You don't want to die with a sissy's gun. You want to die with a man's gun. Yeah, but Grant County, North Carolina is the moonshine capital of the world. Thank you very much. And that's how you sold me, and that's how I went to Z-Days for the first time. Thank you. So I went up there, and I was like, you know what? I got to bring something from Texas for these boys. So I decided to, like, uh, bring my infused tequilas that I do. So I made, uh, for a year, I infused these habanero uh, tequilas. Uh, I think it was habanero. I forget what it was, vodka or something. But either way, it was clear and it was potent. So I brought that up in a jug, like you do. And um, I brought it up. And then you have these bonfire nights, right? So I said, yeah. okay, Georgia boys, let's see what you got. And I started passing this around. And when I when I walk up to you, being the crazy man that I am, I'll be like, and I offer you a drink out of a unlabeled bottle. And I say, hey have a taste of this be mindful about it it's definitely got a bite Sorry. to it Sorry. yeah 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 and, and and it's me protecting you from yourself and and <laughs> because i've carried many i don't want to have to carry you back to your hotel because i got a bad back nobody wants to carry right, right. so right. i went one by one to all the z1 boys and i'm like hey have a taste of this watch out it's got a bite and they were like, it's from Texas. And it's like, it becomes a Georgia, Texas competition. Who's got the yeah. bigger blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay. So next thing you know, they're drinking it. And it's not so much that it's stout. Cause you guys got, I can't beat you on alcohol content, but I can beat you <laughs> on spice. Heat. Yeah, heat. spice. <laughs> so the heat factor was everybody who drank it, apparently just like, cause you don't, I think you guys don't have spice. In Georgia, I think at the county line, they say no spice can get in, get into the the state line. Whatever, yeah. it's like salt and pepper. And I yeah. think it, it, so. I kept giving it out to people, and apparently, I was shutting people down with just the <laughs> the, the, the habanero aspect of it. So yeah. uh, people were just like taking a swig of this. Oh, and it's like, and I was like, here, drink this. This is Texas, and they would drink it. And they would be like, oh, Texas sucks. Like, oh. <laughs> so I, I did put a lot of the Z1 boys to sleep with that. And I, um, it was kind of cheating maybe in an aspect. But I will say this. There, man. <laughs> I was a bit of a troll. But, but I will say this. They got me back with that moonshine. Um, that's where that picture where it comes with the bunny ears and everything. Oh, my yeah. God. That, and there was like some guy, he's a friend of yours. He showed up with like an IROC Trans Am um, and he just popped the lid and he was like, hey, bro, do you want to buy some moonshine? And I was like, yeah, bro, give it up. And so I bought like five jugs of that stuff from some dude in an IROC with a mullet. <laughs> with a mullet. And I have to say, if he's a friend of yours, I want to be on his Christmas list. I'm just saying, <laughs> but yes, I do. And it's, yeah, the alcohol and the debauchery, but the whole thing about it is through all that craziness, I had a really good time. I had a really good uh, experience with it. And, you know, I drove up there with my boys. I got to see you. I got to meet a lot of really cool people and see people in the community because it's a big community, but it really feels like a tight family when everything's said and done. And I can't, I can't say that enough. There's certain events regionally that do do everything justice, but where you boys are at and where you guys are at, you do an amazing event that's regional. And I think I I, I can't wish you more success than what you already have. I mean, you guys are already doing it. And um, I, I just hope that that event just continues to grow and prosper. And, you know, you're always doing it for charity. And kudos to you for being that spirit and being that person um, in this world that does that. Thank you. So. Yeah. 
But he, he knew you too, and everybody else are invited. So maybe when all this nonsense calms down and we go back to normal, come check us out. Yeah. New so if you're out there, ready. yeah, get out there, register for the event. We love you all. Uh, we want to see you definitely continue to support the event. And yep. then um, I think that's everything that we've got here in the event. we got to start wrapping up. We're, of course, yep. we're 30 minutes over like we <laughs> always are. We were supposed to be at an hour. Yes. Of course, yes. we had Brian on. I knew it was going to go over. but whatever. Before we continue on, just a real quick, just some comments. So, uh, again, from Dustin talking about it. He was a victim <laughs> to your uh, moonshine there. No. Uh, between miles with Dustin. self-involved around that ghost pepper moonshine. Uh, how, was, it, it was it's, ghost it's pepper. Icy. It was ghost pepper moonshine. He's right. It was it's even worse pepper. than a habanero. Jesus. No, Christ. it's the same. Yeah. No, I yeah. think ghost pepper is worse. It Plus is. the moonshine. I'm just Plus trying to. Moonshine. I'm trying to bring it down so they don't know, Brian. <laughs> kid, we, call, kid. we call that parts cleaner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, injector cleaner. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> Dustin. I love you, man. I didn't mean it. Uh, I did, but I didn't. So yeah, yeah. my bad. So the guy with the Trans Am, the. Uh, May have been a friend of Todd Weld's, he says here, from out of, out of Alabama. Just no, to let you know, I, if you're looking for that I, Christmas I, list. I, I know who it is, and I won't say his name, but he basically packed his G35 to the point he was on the jump stops all the way up from Alabama with, with mason jars. I love this guy. He's already family. He's already family. <laughs> well, Wody, <laughs> Wody drove up from Jacksonville when he was a brew manager for InBib. With long necks and the the whole way up, all I heard was clinking of long necks. <laughs> <laughs> For a twelve hour drive, warriors come out of it. The back seat, <laughs> twelve cases of long necks. <sighs> good man, good man. Twelve hours, twelve hours. He's doing God's work. He's <laughs> doing God's work. <laughs> that's, well, that's, the same, that's the same year he burnt the fence. He and Eli uh, put fence in uh, Stonehenge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, God bless Todd Welds out there and the Todd mm-hmm. Welds of the world. Continue to drive your moonshine and your long necks through the fog and through the uh, the muck and the slime to deliver it to people like us so we can talk about how the greatness that is uh, you. So, yep. yeah. Yeah, yeah, but again, uh, Brian, thanks for coming on the show, man. I mean, yeah, I missed man. you. I feel like I haven't, you know, with all this COVID bullish, you know, yeah. uh, it's kudos to 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 see you. I, you know, I'm glad you're continuing to support the brand out there, man. I yeah. hope they kind of, um, you know, if Nissan's listening to this, I know we're at an hour and thirty minutes, and the Nissan marketing people drop off after twenty minutes. But I'm just gonna say <laughs> this right now. I hope they get you a proto, man. I hope um, you get something special that kind of comes out to you in the next two weeks. I hope they give you some support. They've done it in the past, and you've mm-hmm. you've had releases at your location. Uh, I hope you kind of get something fancy this year, if not next year. But we are going to be there. Mike and myself will be there one year um, here in the future. So the we'll future, definitely yeah. try to be out there and uh, and try to enjoy the event. But uh, I wish you the best success in this um, in this evolution of your uh, of your event. So. Thanks, but I, I cannot confirm nor deny anything coming to Z Day. Of course you can. Of course you can't. So can't. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, come to think about it, just thinking about it, it was this is probably the just having you on on the show here too. It's probably one of the, the longest times we've been able to talk too, which I'm so happy mm-hmm. because it's always um, you know it's during during Z days. You're always on call. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, same and thing even, with Zcon and you. It's just and you know, Zcon. I, yeah. If, if you want to talk to Brian Settle, you got to find him at Z-Gun. Because if you see him at Z-Days, it's like, hey, buddy, how you doing? Here's a beer. Bye. I'm out. And yeah. it's just like, <laughs> I, yeah, I love you. Okay, bye. I love you. Yeah. Oh, got to go. All right. Well, Welcome to Z-Days. You know I love you. You know Welcome. how it goes. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Same thing for yeah. Nismo. It's like, if you want to talk to me, don't find me at Nismo. Because right. Nismo yeah. Fiesta, I'm not going to be there. So I used to say that too. People would ask me, so what do you? They would ask me what what my personal thoughts were uh, were like on Nismo Fiesta. I go, I don't know. I haven't been. I just <laughs> <laughs> I still have an experienced yeah. one. So uh, still, yeah. everybody say, oh, who's coming to Z days? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I don't have a way here. Yeah. So yeah, thanks for everything, well, man. You've been the ultimate right. host. I've learned a lot from you. I know I've asked you questions in the past. You've always been a great uh, mentor uh, when it comes to hosting events. So I, I genuinely, man, I appreciate it. And you know, I wish you luck uh, in two weeks when this event happens. Yeah. I want to say thank you also to everybody who kind of, sh- um, 
chimed in tonight. Uh, remember to like, share, subscribe to everything that we've got going on. Yeah. Mike, you noticed uh, uh, real quick, don't make it too yeah. long, but we had a jump, right? Yes, yes. So, uh, you know, I get the notifications on uh, Facebook whenever we get new likes onto the Nissan Nerd uh, page. And I've really noticed the trend that, that – and for those of you that are on, on the uh, uh, watching us, thank you for, for liking the page. And if you haven't, please do uh, like the page and encourage others to like. So the algorithms with Facebook, I don't know them exactly. But Nerd. No, no, seriously. <laughs> See, just, yeah. But in general, what I'm saying is that I've noticed that whenever you get like three to five people to uh, like – they share to friends and they share to friends. Literally, it's, like, it's like an within, STD. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Facebook likes are like STDs, but the good ones, at least, at All least right. for us. And though, but. on that note, we're going to end the show. Just like STDs. <laughs> But then, yeah, but continue to support the uh, support the show. Continue to support Z Days. I want to thank you again for uh, Brian Settle for coming out to the event or coming out to the event. Here I am, like Miss Mofias, coming out to the show this time. Want to say um, for any mothers that are out there, not mother, the other one, but the mothers that listen to the show, which yeah. is a weird diag you know, weird small subgroup might get on that, find out how many mothers we have within our thing. But then I um, <laughs> want to say thank you and uh, to all the mothers that are out there, a happy early Mother's Day this weekend that's coming up. want to say again, uh, Kampai to everybody out there. Thank you for Woo! coming into the event. Bye -bye. I got nothing yes, left. Yes, yes, oh. yes. Mm. With that, you are officially free to go. <laughs> Brian, bye. bye. Let, me, let me throw up the credits here. This is the Nissan Nerd Podcast. Thank you for being with us. Spirit fingers. Spirit fingers. fingers. Spirit fingers. Oh, you can do. All right, so let's talk about what's really important right now. So let's talk about that. Your silver, your silver is so much better than mine. Look at that. That's a birthmark. That's a birthmark, man. That's all the way down to roots. Do the carpets match the drapes? What's going on here? <laughs> Hardwood floors. Hardwood floors. Hardwood floors. <laughs> <laughs> That's the All best right, Mike, kill it. I've heard. Done, right, done, right. done, done. Thanks done, again. Done, Guys, we'll talk to you done, later. Done, Next time. Done, done. <laughs>